Колега, доброго дня. Ми будемо розпочинати нашу роботу. Я прошу наших спікерів сісти за стола. Серед заявлених був народний депутат Семен Семенченко, його не буде, мені повідомили, що його нема зараз в Києві, і ми чекаємо Дениса Казанського, десь буде через кілька хвилин. Серед наших спікерів народні депутати, пані Наталя Веселова, пан Єгор Соболів. Passes across the front, uh, the participants Igor Sobolev, uh, MP, Chairman of the Anti-Corruption Parliamentary Committee, Sergei Ivanov, Denis Kalazansky, and Tali Vesilov, Sergei Garbus, are going to stand. Good morning. We were um, assured that the public organizations of Donbass are very uh, time um, sensitive people, but perhaps the key of uh, viruses are very uh, uh, infectious. We have a very serious topic to today. The system of um, issuing the passes through the front line actually gave birth to a, a new wave of corruption. Together with all these parties, including the journalists, we discuss how can overcome or fight combat the staff corruption. Together with Simon Semenchenko, we specifically studied how the system works, starting from the top officials' offices in Kyiv and all the way to the issuance offices, um, the offices will take care of issuing the passes. And how we could actually reject this or um, do without that to provide the necessary control on the part of the militia in our country. Yesterday before the round table, the, uh, Mr. Turchidron, the Secretary of the National Security and Defense Council, called me and we discussed the problem with him and he said that the new system has been prepared, which has to be uh, to come in force on July 7. Mr. Litvinenko um, represents the, uh, the National uh, uh, Security Defense Council of this conference, so I suggest that he should maybe start what kind of system we're going to have. And then we can discuss whether it's, uh, this system is acceptable, how we have enhances. Thank you very much for the opportunity given to me to speak here. I'm absolutely certain, and uh, well, what do I look to start? Number one, I don't think that there is anybody who would object to the need of a certain control of the line of contact, because we know the situation when um, in some uh, districts of Donetsk and Lugansk regions occupied now um, is the place where the uh, terrorists and the saboteurs are coming. Not through the checkpoint, of course, but there is there must be some control system. Item two, the uh, effective system which was introduced in January this year is not the perfect one. There is a big problem, actually two major problems. Uh, which we face, and uh, number one is the um, the direct contact between the uh, official or the, uh, the public servant, um, the, the civil, civil uh, officer, and the uh, perpetrator. And if there is any possibility for corruption to crop up, it will crop up. And there are a lot of uh, long lines which is, uh, create a lot of problems for the citizens. And in addition to the correct function of control over the uh, issuance of passes, we also create the problems for the law obedient citizens. And in order to resolve those two major problems, uh, that actually that was, uh, this is the target of a new system which is going to be effective starting uh, on July the uh, 7th. What are the specifics of the system? Of principle is there is n there will be no direct contact between a citizen and the, uh, and the official. Uh, how we are going to achieve that? Number one, a person, well, uh, if a person has uh, internet access and uh, he has uh, minimum uh, skills. Uh, this person can fill out a certain form on the website, and this person can send uh, certain documents through the email. We do understand that in those uh, districts, and uh, unfortunately all over this country, 
Not all of the citizens have an access to internet, so the person also can use the usual mail and send the letters. And the possibility number four, the checkpoint, and the zero um, point, they are going to <clears throat> add the line of contact. They are going to install certain boxes where a person can uh, lower his or her application, all the necessary documents uh, provided for regard, which has to accompany those applications or requests. And after the documents are coming from all of those, one of those points, electronic or uh, let's say internet or through that mailbox, these requests of the or application of those persons will be verified uh, whether they uh, comply with a certain databases of law enforcement agencies. And then without any physical contact with um, a responsible person, a certain decision will be taken. If a person sends his or her application electronically, um, the, the person will be issued a certain number of his or her request, using which number this person can check where his or her application at what stage of issuance a pass is this request. You know. Over uh, within 10 days, uh, this a certain decision uh, or proper decision uh, uh, should be taken and no later than 10 days uh, or after 10 days the specific person has to come to, uh, to come to the checkpoint producing his or her passport and then the certain person there will uh, check if there is a permission for this person to cross this uh, line or not. If not, this, the name of this person will be entered in the so-called red list, um, or maybe a person has not yet um, uh, let's say sent or supplied, submitted his or her documents, then this person has possibility to do it now. So no um, uh, different passes will be issued. And once again, I would like to emphasize that this system is going to um, to, to, to become effective or efficient uh, in force since July 7th of this year. Thank you. Alexander, maybe you can join us here if you have no objectives. This is no, you know, in this case, everybody can see you and hear you. We are going to change the uh, the nameplate. Alexander represents a public organization, Donbass Sos, right? Uh, good afternoon. Uh, thank you very much for invitation. Extend to me. I have the question regarding this uh, uh, this uh, a statement. It's speaking about electronic uh, email. Email in sector B or C doesn't work, so there is no possibility. Then the mailbox. Can you imagine that you uh, put the, your uh, request application to this box, but there is no guarantee that this uh, letter of yours application will um, come to the coordination group. We have to think how to, to confirm that this kind of request of this you know, person uh, will be, pre will be uh, you know, processed and not to avoid the situation when uh, they will say him eventually that his or her application was lost. The, the biggest problem which actually produced this big line, this is the uh, cancellation of the passenger cars. And a lot of people spend a lot of time to move between different checkpoints using, uh, let's say, uh, if uh, if they do not have enough money, he will be doomed to stay in or uh, live under the bullets and shadowings. Thank you very much. Regarding your first question, what you mentioned uh, regarding the um, mailboxes, those boxes, they're going to be um, checked every three years, uh, excuse me, every three hours during the day, uh, four times a day, and the, the, the letters or requests will be uh, sent to the center of coordination regarding the issuance of the guarantee documents or any guarantees. I would like to emphasize one once again a very important thing, uh, which is a matter of principle for this system. We proceeded from the uh, absence of direct physical contact between the 
a civil uh, of official or military officer in the pro uh, citizens per se. So if you would like to avoid this contact, you send your um, your request through uh, electronically. If you do not have this possibility, I would appreciate and would thank um, uh, the public organization if you could help the uh, citizens who cannot use, do not have skills, uh, how to access internet to help them to um, send their requests or submit their requests and applications in, in a normal way. The third question of your regarding the uh, email um, in sectors B and C, I, I'm sure, I'm positive that starting uh, from July 7th, as the whole system will, um, will, will be operational 100%. And now we are taking care of installation um, uh, efforts. And uh, so uh, we are talking about the 100% operation of the whole system, electronic system. Regarding the cancellation of the, of the regular uh, transport, uh, transportation vehicles and um, the elimination of those um, specific um, uh, transportation routes, Unfortunately, that decision was passed, and this is absolutely non convenient for the ordinary uh, citizens. But that decision was taken proceeding from the um, uh, uh, security and safety uh, interests. You remember in Wolnowaka when, when one of the mini when was destroyed by the Grad uh, artillery installation. And, uh, and uh, again, using some of the regular I mean, when routes or, uh, or uh, uh, transportation, a group of tourists reach Kiev. Unfortunately, that decision was passed. You mean to say that the kilometer long lines of the passenger cars is no target, but the minivans are target for shelling and firing. On the other hand, today there is a huge number of the of the private uh, transportation transporters, let's say, who who charge uh, s uh, uh, something between 100 150 grimna to uh, trans to, to to carry people to convey you know, let's say to, to transport people to the uh, checkpoint. I believe this is nonsense. I absolutely agree with you that there is a problem that we, we should describe. We have to resolve that problem. And the last question. Well, sorry. Well, you know, the, uh, this is not, uh, they talk between two persons only. We have a uh, table, round table. Okay, but the actual, we have a very big discussion. Everybody will have a chance to, to speak here. You, you know, we have uh, several uh, participants and we still have the questions from the audience. No, well, you, you know, I don't think any reasons for everybody to speak now. So if there, is, there are some questions, to a specific person, we can do that, and then, and, and then you'll be the next one. Uh, speaking about the public organization, we have to help. Do 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 those the public organizations have the right to deal with the processing of personal uh, data? Uh, then they uh, won't the SBU actually come up and uh, and say no, you cannot do that. Uh, thank you very much. According to the. Uh, Ukraine law on the protection of personal data. You can, uh, you can actually take the uh, um, the, the consent of this person to process his or her uh, personal data or information. You cannot translate without microphone. If uh, if you are interested in my personal opinion, this law requires very serious. Um, uh, elaboration, you know, further elaboration. I agree with you, this is ab absolutely inefficient law. Correspondent uh, uh, Austin Television, taking into consideration that the remarks several times you use the passes, I can only say that uh, maybe the, uh, the on proxy uh, approach doesn't work here, proxy approach. Uh, yesterday, or oh, uh, uh, 2 p p p.m. they waited a lot at the cross uh, checkpoints. Today's situation with the safety or security is much worse than several months ago. This is number one. Number two, um, speaking about those passes, 
me as the journalist. You have to, to call one of the officials in this sector. I can only tell you that this is uh, uh, this is truly a, a very big source of corruption. If I could open uh, the checkpoint between the DPR and Ukraine, I believe that uh, my my salary must for per one month per one month must be higher than the that one of correspondent Australian uh, tele television. I, and again, what they can do on the territory of the Donetsk region, a pensioner who doesn't have any car or doesn't have internet. I'm sorry. And, 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 and is that an official position of your publication? You, you're actually discriminating between the DPR, you separate DPR from Ukraine? No, this uh, I just mentioned that. I agree with you that this system is not efficient now, and, and that's why we are trying to introduce a new system, and I'm positive this is this would be much simpler uh, in use for the people, and will exclude corruption. Of course, we have to minimize it, the, the possibility of corruption. Now, coming back to the problem raised by Alexander, maybe all those requests can be lost somewhere after they are lowered in the uh, mailbox. Why they didn't? You, you, you know, maybe a person can call some number. Uh, and to make sure, and to, get, to ask whether this request achieved, well, let's say, um, reached the destination point or not. Yeah, I agree with you. I believe we are going to have a discussion, but I, I really believe that there must not be any kind of, uh, you, you know, the, the, those the applications, requests, and the passport requirement is a corruption scheme, you know. Vladimir Polyvy, thank you. I have the phone question. Uh, we already recognized several levels that the Russian Federation is an aggressor and actually our uh, combat operations, we, we fight the Russian Federation troops. Then the question, why are the aggressor is the Russian Federation, but the visa and permission system is introduced at the um, borders of the occupied territories, which are actually part of Ukraine. Why we do not introduce the system at the same time at the borders with the Russian Federation and the Crimea, where you still have the free trade zone in the Crimea, Crimea, where we can freely deliver the commodities and goods. Why the people in long lines, watch long uh, trains, uh, uh, freight tra trains, and we at the same time have kind of uh, limitations, restrictions for the medications and food products. Uh, in those territories while they are smug smuggled to uh, the Russian Federation. Thank you very much for speaking up your mind regarding the visa regime with the Russian Federation. As you know, we introduced the crossing of the border with the Russian Federation based on the passports. Also, the decision taken by the National Defense and Security Council in March this year, they, um, provide, they actually instructed the cabinet ministers to introduce some changes in the visa regime. Speaking about the uh, smuggling operations and, uh, well, first of all, if you're talking on the, uh, the situation between the uh, Ukraine and the temporary occupied uh, territories, there cannot be any smuggling because there is no border or no state, state frontier. And actually, you have understand that movement of the different commodities, whether they have foodstuffs or anything else, cannot be considered smuggling if there is no border between the territories. No. Then, this, uh, the, 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 those products and those commodities, where they go further on, you know, uh, colleagues, this is a traditional approach when we are trying to, you know, uh, uh, make, uh, to scorn the uh, representative of the, uh, the National Security and Defense Council and can do the same about the deputies. Uh, we have to, to just raise the issues and then to see how we can resolve the issues which will remain or outstanding problems which will remain after even this system is going to be uh, introduced otherwise it's counterproductive well, i would like uh, to uh, to thank once again to mr Lutvinenko for his coming here 
coming here and uh, giving him a chance to introduce this new system. Uh, I, I, I'm all for the questions, but please put them in the correct form. My name is Jan Lukianovka. Uh, I uh, represent the Organization of Human Rights Protection. My question is to Mr. Litvinenko. Will a new system which is going to be introduced, uh, does it make provision today for a normal personnel, material, technical support? Because you understand that the previous no, let's say our provisions would be more successful if we had normal computers, if we could ensure that the internet is accessible everywhere, you people had the opportunity to call um, the hotline. Have it been just uh, decided already who is going to manage that? Do we have enough personnel uh, to take care of that? Do they, uh, they provide it with all necessary technical engineer support? Thank you. Um, for your uh, question, I would like to say the following. This system will be much better provided and support than the existing one. But let's not try to deceive ourselves. The problem is, that's why we are talking about 10 days for introduction, but not just one day or night. Which, you know, uh, let's put it this way. In Ukraine, there is no, no electronic register of the citizens. Uh, so far, the passport and uh, the personal data have not been digitalized. A part of the passport information is still in, in paperwork, um, the, uh, exclusively paperwork. Uh, the, well, they, we do not have the single uh, database for passports in this country. And the huge work uh, to put it in a digital form is going on, but this is really very slow. Uh, it takes place very slowly and requires a lot of funds and expenditures. But they once again would like to emphasize that the system which is going to be introduced on July 7 will be much, uh, um, more, much more efficient. And I do appreciate what you said about the uh, need to, to verify uh, the submission or movement of the documents through the uh, telephone lines. We make provision for more prompt uh, checking and uh, verification of documents using databases. I'm not saying that it's, we are going to have a perfect system. It's not going to be ideally perfect, but it's going to be much better than the existing one. Uh, uh, a couple more questions to Alexander. Alternative uh, 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 right protections, uh, human rights protection center. It's not a question. I would like to offer my comments and um, express my position, which I believe will be shared by many of those present here. Many people actually have already issued passes, but since the bus um, the commun communication between cities has been stomped, uh, stomped uh, but you know they 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 have um, pri private minivans, eight for eight passengers, and uh, paying 250 grivnia. You ha you can pay this to be carried from Alchevs to uh, let's say the next region. But the, in the next region, you have to take another means of transportation because the, um, the this kind of conveyance has been st stopped. Can you actually? By the way, this this is actually the. Uh, governor of Donetsk region, can you actually influence uh, somehow that person in order to provide the possibility for the person uh, um, just to move be in between? Uh, thank you for your question. I would like to emphasize that General Moscow is the head of the civil, civil, military, civil military administration. According to the law on those administrations, he has more authorities than the ordinary governor or the head of the uh, uh, regional administration. Number two, I do, uh, I agree with you. Not, not that I agree with you. I just heard what you, I, I heard you. And I'm going to report to my um, superiors. We'll try to resolve that issue. This is absolutely um, a normal uh, question. Uh, can you please tell me, or, this period of time, have you launched or let's say started at least one criminal case regarding the situation associated with those checkpoints? I'm not the law enforcement officer, but I know that SBU uh, started more than one case. And what was the result of that? You know, as far as I know, there was a case of, uh, let's say, shooting 
uh, actually uh, shooting to death one of the SBU officers when he tried to combat or fight that corruption. I, honestly speaking, I do not know whether that case was brought to the court or not. I'm not prepared to uh, give that information. By the way, it was not it was not proven whether he tried to fight that corruption or to become the leader of that corruptive uh, corruption scheme. Well, there is a name which is well known, you know, the colonel who was arrested, you know, I don't know. I will say a question to Alexander. In my opinion, uh, we need some kind of a security system there, but but the, uh, the, the, the the system for passes existing one. In, in addition, which it can uh, can resolve the problem with terrorism, whatever. But this creates the problems with the blockade and uh, lack of loyalty of those who remain on that territory. Create corruption, some legal problems, like uh, we would say the violation of infringement of the uh, legal rights of those people who reside still on the occupied territories, and we, and even those like us who left that territory, we can. Uh, return there and take our personal belongings. How you resolve the questions of combating terrorism and all those issues which you raised in my comment uh, for us to return there and live a normal life. You know, I will answer in the following way to your question. The war, and we, we do have the uh, war situation here. Oh, okay, uh, let's put it this way. There are some warfare uh, military operations within the framework of ATO, um, ATO which is the uh, uh, regime of anti terrorist operations, which entails the infringement of some freedoms and rights of uh, citizens, which our country informed the competent international bodies. Of course, we cannot characterize this situation only as a tragedy, tragedy, and and, uh, and whether introduction of the security measures will create problems for the citizens. Of course, it will. Whether the, those measures are efficient, or very often the the, the system existing today it, it is not efficient, and it, it results in addition to what you said, also to the irritation of the part of the citizens, indignation and negative attitude to both those measures and, uh, and the country which introduced those measures, etc., etc. Under those circumstances, I believe that we need to try and uh, to improve uh, the system, to ensure its better functionality and, and uh, simplify its functioning for the people and to decrease the level of corruption. The, the, this is why we introduced this system. I mentioned that, you, uh, sorry, we have to give a chance to Alexander to leave. Well, what I mentioned, uh, meant to say that the system must exist in principle, but since it creates some problems, there must be some uh, set of measures how to resolve those problems. We do not have any longer our TV, TV channels. We also have a kind of information blockade. And if we deprive them of the possibility to, to move means transportation, they lose, lose their understanding that they live in the real world. So maybe, uh, and we can, and talking about some kind of lack of loyalty, we have to create some measures how to, uh, to return that loyalty on those people, etc., etc. I will, I will tell you, uh, that I absolutely agree with you. And actual set of measures is being worked on now, worked out now, as regards the public policy or the state policy regarding those uh, areas. Uh, they uh, make provision for information measures. We try to implement those. You know that the Ministry of Information Policy tries to create a system of digital uh, transmission broadcasting uh, to some of the areas in the Donetsk and Lugansk regions. And again, I cannot but recognize that uh, uh, there is a lot of inefficient measures, uh, but we try to, to work under those circumstances which are available today. Yeah, please.
Mr. Trinak, believe me that those who are present here are constructively tuned. Maybe the atmosphere is not really friendly, but if you imagine yourself in the shoes of those who remain there, the situation will be even worse. Those people send that on their skin. So my question is, maybe on the level of the project or developing some project, those people who really seem to feel the situation that any proposal coming there, he has to, uh, to put through his mind and heart, you know, and all his parents. Uh, here, I can agree with you. It is uh, yeah, real, this is the situation you de described. One more question, very briefly, please. I have the question. Uh, if you do not have war, and we have just ATO, anti-terrorist, operation uh, which is going to be carried out temporarily but people living there for two years now so practically speaking how can um, and how those people who move to you to this part of ukraine they live here and want to stay here how can they come and take their belongings or personal belongings without any bribes without any contracts whatever in the autonomous direction, people to, to take their belongings or their property, they have to come into some contact with some corruptions. How we can fight this? Are there any legal measures or methods how to, to take their, their property here? Uh, second question, do you plan to to provide for the, or to set up the Ministry of Immigration or Integration, whatever, so that can uh, work in this way that uh, they, uh, to ensure some systematic work of some of the border agency. Answer your second question. Uh, my personal opinion, setting up of the public body, um, and, and we, in this case we are going to turn the temporary problem into the continuous or permanent problem. We have to, um, to act within the framework of the um, existing bodies and agencies. I have uh, enough authorities to take care of those issues or works. Uh, so your first question regarding the possibility to take uh, the um, uh, property and uh, personal belongings from the temporary occupied territories. I can tell you we are trying to, we are working now on a more efficient procedure of the system of the past regime and we, we are going to create a more efficient system of moving the uh, cargo and freight which will minimize corruption at least decrease the level of corruption which definitely is there you know, um, speaking about what you mentioned regarding the availability or the presence of those corruption um, approaches and schemes so you have to send your your, your um, application to the minister of interior and uh, other um, law enforcement bodies because we have to take actions against those people and put them behind the bars, you know. Next question. The Lugansk uh, uh, Human Rights Protection Group, Zonshkanatari, our organization is part of the SBU regarding the development of the more, uh, imp the improved or perfect procedure. Unfortunately, not our comments have been taken into consideration. The biggest problem or biggest issue is is it possible to appeal against the uh, rejection for those people who remain on the Pi territory? Theoretically speaking or technically speaking, they have no opportunity if they were uh, uh, rejected to move. They cannot appeal against this decision uh, through the courts. The, the checkpoints will not let them go. They cannot put the documents anywhere in the documents there. And no other possibilities or opportunities are provided for. So the question arises why this temporary procedure, which now is being, uh, let's say, announced at the uh, more approved, does not actually resolve those problems. We prepared uh, to, uh, to simplify the possibility of the presence of the Ukrainian uh, post service there. If the persons would like to appeal against this, uh, this decision or rejections for the people to have this opportunity. Number two question, taking into consideration that this system provides for the phone, it, I mean the electronic format of, uh, in the, to provide the minimum contact with the uh, officers or the bureaucrats, 
uh, why uh, did you use a kind of permissive principle instead of using the contrary or the uh, opposite uh, principle of prohibition? There is a lot of uh, people who are supposed to under suspicion of being terrorists. Uh, and there is at least the register of the voters. Why don't you use those data? All the, um, the uh, let's say, the people uh, who uh, were uh, temporarily, internally de displaced, I uh, believe uh, uh, there will be enough information which is available to the uh, law enforcement bodies to use that. Answering your first question, thank you very much, first of all, for that. At 12 o'clock, we have a meeting with the representatives of the SBU, and we are going to discuss the issue regarding the um, uh, the possibility to to launch or to, to let's say to to submit the to launch an appeal. Uh, sorry for the using this legal term regarding the next second question: permissible uh, procedure or the uh, procedure of providing some information. Okay, uh, let's uh, look at this problem from the following angle. We have a huge volume, or let's say a huge amount of persons who cross this line. Uh, uh, about 400,000 people applied or submitted those requests. So what the percentage of the rejections? you know, uh, of negative um, uh, answers to their request. This is a negligible person, percent. We are talking about the mm, information about movement de facto. Uh, only those people who, who are entered in the database of SBU, it's a issue for terrorism or some illegal actions in other databases. That's it, only those people will be rejected or given the negative answer to the application. Okay, a person submitting documents and pass through the uh, all the procedures according to the law, and he believes that he has a right to have freedom of movement. We offered such possibility, and we, we will decide that the uh, SB will not have enough time, and we have to take care about the human factor, and the human factor is bad, that now they, apply to some corruption schemes not to uh, be forced to take this possibility of this administrative, you know, uh, situation. This actually brings about parasitism, uh, parasitism and uh, um, corruption. You don't have to ask me, I understand uh, everything immediately. Maybe I do not understand something, but let's form some semantic nucleus here in the epicenter of what we are talking about now, we are, we are discussing here. We are thinking how to uh, facilitate the life of the people in the occupied territory or to continue to, to return to, you know. Please do not, do, not, do not give me a chance to finish. I understand you're coming from the same parts as I myself. Um, the, this number, okay, it's number one. Either we would like, or we would like to stop, put the end of, to this conflict. To do that, it's obvious that we have to follow those regulatory documents which have been adopted. We have a uh, legal and regulatory act uh, adopted by the Verkhovna Rada, according to which this, this territory is believed to be occupied territory. It's, they specify the name of the occupationist. Actually, Russia has been recognized as the aggressive country. Okay, le, le, you're, we are trying to, uh, to, 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 to argue about definitions. Uh, just open in the dictionary and you'll see that the doors are synonymous. Are you asking me as Jupiter what? Okay, wait, well, just wait a minute. Wait, wait a minute. So, so, just please listen to me. I, 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 I already heard you enough during my done. Actually, as far as I remember, you were on the opposite side. No, I don't mean you. You, you were closer to the <laughs> strapped ones, you know. That's why. I, well, okay, okay. The question is not like that. Why, why you invited me if I cannot say anything? You wait just for a minute. We have to let the chance to Alexander to leave this discussion. And uh, then we are going to continue our discussion. Of course, we are going to 
to keep an eye, to make it correct one, you know, uh, summing up the questions which were put. So I have a, a request uh, to you, Alexander, to report the following radius. Number one, speaking about the minivan on bus, we have to immediately take care of uh, resolving this problem because the, uh, what, actually what you propose, this is not the resolution, this will uh, be fraught with some other problems to crop up. You understand there is the, the, this has nothing to do with security, but the outburst of uh, indignation and the, the, the uh, uh, let's say, uh, uh, in the problems which are created for the people. Number two, using the very good database base uh, which is available to the border guards, the, uh, the most um, uh, realistic version is to check the passports. We understand what you are talking about. There is no single register and many, uh, much of information has not been put into dig digital format, but if you are talking about the security problems which would exist maybe not for one month or uh, no, more than one, uh, one year even, but they really uh, need this problem to be resolved immediately. There is another option which we propose to Mr. Turchino, so SBU, Ministry of the Interior, all the uh, law enforcement bodies. You were talking about the principal person to be included in the special list as uh, the dangerous um, uh, person. Could be uh, this information should be added to the database of the border guard service. In this case, we can immediately detain such persons and, uh, uh, and the, uh, no, not uh, not only for the occupied territories, but all over the borders where those wonderful tourists um, uh, in brackets are coming through. In this case, the system of passes will not be required at all. Uh, Mr. Alexander, there will be no passes. Well, the system which you propose now, uh, anyway, this is the form of uh, preservation of the system of passes. The Ukrainian citizens has to produce his or her passport to the border guard, and there should be enough for identification of the person who was entered into, let's say, then people who can present some uh, dangerous threat. Uh, our proposal, after introduction, new procedure, together with the public organization, we could monitor, well, include an SBU using the possibility of people's deputies to check how it works and then come back to this scheme. But uh, it's, our, uh, it's our conviction until we verify uh, the uh, passports all over along the whole line of the official borders, nothing will happen. On um, uh, July 1st, we are going to convene the meeting of the, our committee together with the Minister of Justice to, for them to report about the opening of the registers. And you know, this is uh, associated with uh, a lot of corruption. It's high time to do something about that. I absolutely agree with you, and uh, we should take some decisions about uh, registers, and we should do something, and something is done there, and uh, that is correct, but we should do more. And I thank you for uh, for the organization of this roundtable, because it is very important, and I hope that uh, SBU and uh, uh, law enforcement officers, they work uh, to spread this information on the uh, specifics of this new system. And we should inform people on uh, this. And I thank you for your initiative. I uh, ask uh, uh, you, you should uh, uh, be careful and not to, uh, not to offend someone. So uh, I want to say that uh, what uh, what uh, ha happens now uh, regarding the crossing the bo uh, border? Be uh, uh, believe me, uh, crossing the line. Uh, so I have relatives uh, uh, there, and someone can't just live there, and someone tries to uh, live there. So uh, sometimes they I receive some information about them, but they are under occupation, and uh, uh, it is just like uh, during the Second World War. Uh, the same, uh, uh, the same enemy, the same enemy. So who wants to uh, destruct everything that exists? Uh, so um, uh, if we um, 
uh, if we permit to go there and go out of there, and uh, if we try to, uh, so we, uh, in this way, we would uh, help them to exist. So if Russia wants to, so they should give money to them. But uh, we uh, saw uh, problems in uh, Sverdlovsk and uh, Zaharchenko. Uh, he didn't know where to get uh, from people, and uh, we also saw entrance it and Krasny Luch and we uh, can't fight Russia uh, militarily we understand it clearly uh, now of course uh, so uh, I said that uh, Donbass uh, it uh, maybe Russia will sink because of the uh, because of it uh, so uh, my position is if you occupied Crimea so uh, that uh, you should free it because it's a problem so uh, uh, Poroshenko uh, brings uh, the products. I, you say that I don't criticize Poroshenko, but I believe that uh, Poroshenko should uh, uh, be responsible for his actions because his uh, enterprises uh, continue to, um, to um, they, uh, they still have some links uh, so, uh, with, uh, with them. So we have uh, the next proposition and we continue with the topic of uh, passes and if we uh, can add something, uh, understanding some new information, we, uh, we should uh, continue with another topic that uh, is broader. Uh, so the status of occupied Donbass. So uh, we are speaking now only about passes system. First of all, I would like to introduce myself. Uh, I'm the first deputy of the uh, frontier, um, uh, and I uh, uh, returned from the uh, ETO zone. And I worked uh, there, and uh, I want to uh, tell you about my impressions, uh, about our obligations and their fulfillment. So uh, there were some critics, uh, some criti uh, critical statements. So what can I say? Uh, Today, uh, of course, these issues we've mentioned are very important. Of course, today uh, there's some order that we discuss about um, passes to uh, temporarily occupied territory and uh, to this territory and from this territory. And there is a, a great tension in the uh, points of uh, entry and exit. Uh, so uh, there's only two uh, uh, points uh, for entry and exit from this uh, 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 region. So uh, the last example about Bugas uh, point. So uh, last Friday, um, uh, well, uh, so they try to uh, exit this uh, territory uh, four or five kilometers. Uh, four or five kilometer line uh, from cars that uh, return because of different reasons to the Donetsk, Donetsk Volnavaha um, highway. So, and Bugas, where um, bus was uh, shot and uh, uh, sh shelled, and uh, there are some uh, lines of cars. And from the temporarily occupied territory to Ukraine. Uh, there are some. Uh, uh, there is a great line too, and uh, people uh, di of different age are there. People, uh, elderly, children, and uh, uh, ca technical capability of this point of entry and exit. It is very small and. Uh, uh, it can't cope with uh, uh, so, uh, so many people. So, and uh, we are trying now uh, to um, uh, help these people and uh, to control uh, 
this situation and as Igor said uh, also ac according to databases to check uh, the information and in our databases uh, there are uh, more than so 4,000 people so uh, if uh, the pa passport in the system uh, the data from this past uh, in the system so you can pass and there is also a humanitarian aspect that you should know about uh, and maybe you know and don't want to speak about it because uh, in uh, these uh, points uh, there is a, a team of uh, representatives from governmental bodies, fiscal offices and uh, different uh, offices from different departments. There are people who uh, leave uh, temporarily occupied territories. They say that uh, they uh, are displaced people if, uh, if for example, uh, they try to enter and uh, they are not helped to do this so they should uh, they should address to um, address to state departments uh, so um, uh, there are uh, we try to uh, help people it's very difficult and uh, uh, you should be there and speak to people and feel what is going on there and then it, uh, we understand or what situation we have. So uh, about the lines, uh, our correspondent uh, said that uh, yesterday in Bogos, uh, 14 hours, they waited for 14 hours. But why? Because there was sh uh, shelling and uh, uh, our officers uh, there, they uh, got ser uh, seriously hurt uh, uh, in the head. And uh, what should be done? what uh, could be expected and uh, how can we uh, react to the situation and uh, uh, such crossing points are only two because uh, um, because militants and uh, Russian terrorists uh, they, uh, they, uh, they conduct shellings uh, to uh, prevent people to cross uh, the, the line uh, because in um, Lugansk uh, Oblast, there's no, uh, as one speaker said, uh, there's no uh, such points there. So, um, as Litvinenko said, uh, they took the decision that uh, on the uh, 7th of uh, Ju uh, July, uh, they uh, renew this point for entry and exit, and the security component is of great concern. As to, uh, corruptive, uh, as to corruption, of course, uh, we should say openly that uh, even among us, I can say, as, uh, the, uh, about 10 um, officers are under investigation right now, and it is connected not with uh, people, but with freight and uh, uh, goods. So uh, there is a guilt. Uh, there is guilt, and uh, uh, court will is going to deal with it. And as to the um, as to the variant of uh, uh, of uh, how to solve the situation, uh, you remember about the Crimea. Uh, Crimea. So uh, there was uh, such points. Uh, there were so, uh, such points there, but uh, these measures uh, were not uh, effective. We actually tried such a form as the public control. Yeah, uh, speaking about the departmental uh, ordinances or, let's say, uh, uh, directives, we have the Tatarian uh, diaspora and volunteers who are there. And, uh, for example, a person um, has some question, she can approach uh, a common person and tell him about that. There is a tension. There are, there are a lot of problems. There are volunteers and many patriots and people who come here. We are prepared to cooperate with you there and see and look at those problems. But this will not resolve the problem. I'm very sincere with you. But maybe we will remove the tension which we have today. And another point, we are open. In those issues uh, which you have, please, please let us discuss those. Let's meet together and let us uh, join our efforts in resolving those problems. Because those are our problems. Those are our people. Thank you. We have 25 minutes left, so please. 
Uh, very briefly, uh, can you tell me um, now at the occupied territory they freely uh, bring the, uh, the, the, the goods and commodities for the enterprises and you have to register uh, the this and pay the taxes to Ukraine, but the entrepreneurs who carry the freights there, they're not allowed to go there. Don't you think we either have to prohibit to everybody or to give permission to everybody? Because this kind, this is going to bring about more corruption. Actually, I joined this opinion. I believe that all the goods and commodities which are brought to the territory should not be brought there. Moreover, um, I believe that uh, all the uh, deliveries of the so-called humanitarian aid must be uh, carried out uh, either uh, exclusively within the framework of the UN on the Red Cross um, programs, uh, the competent organization, or the other, they like it. The Akhmetov Foundation, we should forget about that. Also, we have to provide necessary audit by the law enforcement agencies where they collect that money, uh, where they go, and how they spend those. As for business, uh, there is a territory occupied. We cannot anything um, uh, uh, send there or bring there because we ourselves actually put the wood, uh, firewood into that uh, oven, you know. Otherwise, if you are going to feed that uh, region or feed that, those, uh, that business, we are going to have 50 more years of this problem. Uh, as for Kvento and others, when I, uh, when I had a discussion the next three days ago with the International Red Cross Committee, they told me that that one of the days no, nobody allowed any uh, a single truck uh, of, uh, of the Red Cross. Maybe on that day, on June 3, there was some shelling, heavy shelling. You, you, your journals, you have to compare that. Maybe that was associated with the security of those people and safety of those people. They, they said that not that was not the only the issues of safety. I don't think that there are crazy people who are going to uh, to demand the bribes from Red Cross people. No, no, I'm not a president of the committee, but I just uh, raised that issue. You see, if you need a lot of time to, to think the problem over, this is your personal um, uh, problem, but we have to understand each other. Uh, well, last time I was here, uh, there I was on Friday, there was a long line and there was no showing. Thank you for your information. Natalia, you have the floor. Specifically on this issue, very briefly, please. Uh, in Bugas there is no shelling, but between the Bugas and the zero point, uh, in order to cover that, there, there, are, there, there are special patrols, you know. We, there, there is a shelling. In, uh, why, why we should give permission to put them under shelling or what? And speaking about the freight, you talking to the National Red Cross Committee, uh, I would recommend you to use the verified uh, information. Do you end cargo? For example, five trucks uh, are not, um, uh, not permitted to pass, but because they do not have any papers or uh, any way bills. So just Red Cross inscription. If there are all the necessary documents regarding the humanitarian freight, there is no problem with that because this issue is under control all over this perimeter. Actually, having heard about the new uh, pass system, I can't see any big difference. Uh, except for the new installation, new boxes and the checkpoints. I, I couldn't hear anything about the simplified system or any kind of fight in the corruption because people, the same situation, they didn't have any f feedback from SBU and they are not going to have that feedback with them any, anyway. Some call centers have been set up, but uh, it's uh, operative. But it's impossible to reach those. Maybe they are going to stop another uh, call center, but this will not resolve the problem. Uh, irrespective of how many new systems are introduced, they will not resolve that problem. And they in no way resolve the problem of corruption. What Sergey mentioned, that we have to block everything on the occupied territory. But also speaking, perhaps we should start with the uh, state frontier with Russia. If you start with that, then we can talk about some kind of blockade of Donbass area because for some reason we are afraid of citizens in Ukraine, we are afraid of them more than the terrorists. And we have the uh, frontier with Russia coming through the Kharkov, Donetsk, 
uh, regions why we do not exercise control there. Whatever you do, we say that we are fighting terrorists, or we are trying to combat financing of terrorists, but in fact we are financing them because as soon as we um, stop uh, the service, bus service between the occupied territory and the free territory of Ukraine, um, a new business crop, a new business crop up. Taxes and the private um, uh, car carriers uh, start to uh, appear more and more, and we, in this way, we actually uh, finance terrorists. Well, actually, I'm all for the uh, breaking the diplomatic t uh, ties. You know. Okay, uh, let's go further. Maybe you can, can, can do, do, take the port of the Russians and the uh, journals. I believe this will be a normal way to do. Microphone, please. Well, anyway, I'm going to finish what I was going to say. We should not forget that in, on the uh, occupied the most territory, there are Ukrainian citizens. You know, nobody deprives them of citizenship. They have at least the right to live. They have the right to save their lives and uh, leave their territory. We actually came across the situation when uh, there was the, the fight, uh, the battle under the Balsawa, Bal Bal and people could not leave Lugansk uh, region because they could not provide the documents for we issued passes. They didn't have enough money even to zero some documents. You know. We are fighting uh, the uh, civil uh, civilian population. We offer them to fight against the armed forces. We, we perhaps we should take some other approach to resolve those issues. We still have about 15 minutes to finish our discussion. I would like to say that any security measures must be compensated somehow. If the SBU resolves their problem, let's put it this way, and they pre uh, uh, provide the con uh, conditions for the uh, officers to work, but they should not uh, create you know, new problems for the citizens. So, uh, we, uh, we have to talk about comprehensive policy. Yeah, if we do not uh, give it, uh, the chance of people to, uh, to, 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 to go somewhere, yeah, anyway, if, uh, even those who, who move to this part of Ukraine, so we have to take care of the jobs and places where they can reside or create the conditions for those people who stayed on the territory. Sergey, we are talking about economic issues. If we, uh, we are talking about uh, the uh, people who do not have a chance to leave their territory, this is not an economic issue. This is actually uh, somehow uh, kind of uh, creating problems with people. We have to do everything possible so that people do not turn their backs on us. You know, if we, we, if we are going to return there, at least uh, I think so. But I cannot see what is done for us to return to those area, uh, territories. We are, we, are talk, we are doing everything to isolate the territory. Maybe we somehow, we have to somehow yeah, isolate, but we should not forget about the that problems. For example, those, uh, uh, you know, a small uh, village. Uh, I, I don't go to give you. I'm not going to give you uh, the real name. Everybody knows. For example, per person uh, is a miner. Works on the um, let's say almost depleted mine, and he said uh, one day, and then he has a day of repose, and then he he stands for uh, for two days at the checkpoints. How are you going to actually to to see? You? Uh, to filter those people. If there is shooting starts, he shoots at the Ukrainian people. Do, do you propose to, to feed those people? No, I'm not going to propose to feed those. You know, those people who do not have any means for subsistence, they actually they are forced to join the militants. So in this case, well, you contradict yourself. You are talking about uh, breaking the economic ties. Uh, yeah, I, 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 I'm, what I am saying that the factory should not work there. But what conditions then? Even if they pay the taxes there, they also uh, pay the salary there. I'm against that. But we have to create the free territory, all the necessary conditions where people could, work, could go to and buy the cheap sausages which they dream since two so times. In coming back to the occupied territory, say that here people live better life than there. 
And we actually blocked that channel now. Uh, we would like to ask more time um, because uh, a lot of things have not been voiced by the people. We need more time. There is a proposal to focus on the further actions to be taken. We uh, raised some of the issues. There are some uh, things which we are unanimous in our opinion regarding the new system of passes. There are different positions regarding the regulation of the commercial trading uh, relations with the uh, occupied territories. We are going to talk about that more and not only today. But we have only 10 minutes to go. What we are going to do with the next months? I suggest we should uh, uh, adopt some kind of resolution demanding the, uh, uh, the cancellation of the um, prohibition of any kind of conveyance or movement. And nobody provided uh, any good grounds, uh, just justification for this measure. Because uh, when, when people are moving by some uh, private buses, this is more dangerous than the regular bus, uh, bus routes. You can come to Kharkov, Lugansk, and there is an announcement and uh, big letters. We have to uh, demand today, at least, to remove that problem. By all means, we have to remove that problem. Uh, moreover, today, a lot of people who do not have enough time to go through the checkpoints, they try to go to the mi uh, minefields where they spend nights. I would like to uh, ask uh, you to increase the number of the border guards officers uh, who control Access control over the uh, flow of the people or the uh, vehicles coming uh, through those points. And each border guard has to have a special badge, according temporary maybe. And uh, if you you have, have a hotline, uh, uh, point 44, maybe you should point, uh, provide the free uh, calling service like uh, 0800, you know. 30 seconds at your disposal. We are let the Russian news then pass. Uh, my question doesn't relate to the past, past system because we can talk about that every day with the World Guard Service. My question the, the head of the mission, Gansk uh, region, Uminkesh, told that the uh, public uh, TV that there is a, a program when they uh, call uh, moving between the free Ukraine and occupied Ukraine. That con uh, information uh, uh, has been confirmed by SBU and others. What kind of p p program which exists now, which uh, where they call moves between the factories or companies of like Meta and back? Thirty seconds for the answer. The issue, uh, the issue of uh, freight or cargo movement is not within the jurisdiction or competence of the State Border Service in Ukraine. <clears throat> and the 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 tax the, the, the tax administration has to take care of that. Uh, I have a proposal. You, you uh, aptly mentioned that uh, indeed the militants or Russians, they uh, bombard everything in order to achieve what to stop the communication between the people. They they we uh, we should not do that. We should do maximum possible efforts. People have normal life. So again, you uh, touched upon the normal uh, topic: passports. Uh, those people who who do not have any problems with the law, they have to uh, to have a free movement through. Maybe you should introduce some third category, in addition to the red and green, also the yellow one. And actually, they can be given permission to reach the point of destination. That's it. Well, uh, a short, a short answer. You, you, you actually. Uh, I, I haven't finished yet. Uh, here we have in Ukraine the freedom of speech. I don't know who, to, uh, who actually was uh, teaching you. Maybe we should introduce a yellow card. Why? As uh, Mr. Batinsky said, that a, a, a nation, including the Jews, has a right to have the best original. So, okay, let that pe person come here. I'm talking about the yellow card. There are two points, passports and this kind of uh, the um, uh, blacklist. But if, because he's, he fired somebody, there are two uh, coffin coming to Ternopil region. So what about that? 
Uh, Vladimir Polivoy, uh, this is not the first time I present uh, the different uh, functions or meetings where they discuss those problems. There, in fact, uh, and, and nobody who is present here, with all the respect, uh, with all due respect to represent or do uh, border guard service, there is no, uh, and there's not a single person who is a decision make, ma maker. Uh, if you apply uh, to address the SBU, they say that this is not within their competence and uh, send it to fiscal experts. The fiscal experts say this is not their competence either. So who takes the decision, passes the decision, who signs the documents? The temporary uh, provisional procedure was signed by the uh, head of the ATO zone. He is the, SBU general, uh, but the uh, SBU is not responsible for the decisions they take here. There is no answer to the question in this country who is responsible for what's going on in the ATO zone and at the uh, uh, um, uh, uh, line of contact or crossing line. This uh, uh, question should be or issue should be raised at all the levels and try to get the answer to that. Uh, order uh, uh, for 15 OG. Uh, everything is clear there. I, I, I would not comment anything which uh, belongs or falls within my competence. This I believe to be incorrect. On uh, June 18th, the new order which introduced new procedure of um, entr and entry and uh, exit. 50 kilograms of freight and how to, to give permission for this freight to pass or go through, even uh, there is a list of the enterprises. Who, uh, yeah, everything is uh, outlined there. Vadim uh, Khachaturov, public movement together, Razum. My question is, uh, you were in the Artyomovsk uh, direction. I come from Gorlovka, you know. There is uh, the uh, the sites uh, of uh, from Artyomovsk in some territory of Ukraine, like uh, Golovka and Donetsk, uh, Tradovka, Kurdimovka, Merovk, and so on. People also live there, so they are forced to go uh, to their work in Artyomovsk, stand in long line, uh, come back. So maybe for those people living in that zone, we can create some special, maybe not special, but some different conditions and terms for crossing the hills line. I understand. This has been done already. May, may, for the local persons, uh, um, um, the, uh, the local citizens, we provide the special conditions. I mean, in Bugas and Zaitsev, they can use their passports for passing. We have the personnel who take control, and the local people uh, belong to a separate individual category. Okay, a final maybe some remarks, and because of the lack of time, we have to finish. I would like to thank everybody who joined us here. It's good that we gathered here, uh, and what is bad that we have a lot to uh, a lot to do, so that uh, our discussion had some fruit. First proposal is that everybody should focus on monitoring how this system uh, works now and how it's going to work starting uh, starting uh, June 7th. We are going to send a letter to the, uh, all participants how to get uh, to provide the feedback. The second proposal to uh, to disseminate the idea that the banning or prohibition of the bus uh, uh, communication. Uh, is not really expedient or not reasonable, and it gives way, uh, it gives rise to more corruption. I believe that the Border Guard Service will join us. Together with Natalia, we are going to send a letter to the Secretary of the National Defense Security Council because he seems to be a person who can take care of that. And third proposal to journalists, to bloggers, to us, people's deputies, we have to raise the issue. What's going on with the instruction of the government to uh, to introduce visa uh, with Russia? It's really amazing that we uh, recognize Russia as an aggressive country and we still keep our borders open with that country. And uh, what pertains to the occupied territory of Donbass? My understanding is it's more than one year elapsed since that uh, time the instruction was issued, we should 
Maybe uh, as the Minister of Foreign Affairs, we are going to raise this question with the government and uh, the question to the mass, uh, the request to mass media to raise the issue in, in your respective uh, publications or channels. And in in the months uh, when we will have two weeks when the new system will be in operation, we uh, propose we should get together again and to ask them if we are going to ask them in advance to come here, officials, I mean, to hear our opinion regarding the operation of that system and maybe take care of the comments uh, regarding that uh, uh, system. Thanks a lot to all the participants and the special thanks to the Ukrainian uh, Crisis Media Center. Okay, we are going to end the request to have more time for this discussion. I uh, 